some ways, this is, uh, well, what is it? Um, it's an opportunity to kind of collectively look at uh, what Transition Putney is involved in. Uh, what we realized when we did our visioning session, uh, with which uh, Rich Burbridge led over here Hello. Uh, about two weeks ago, was people said, well, uh, two things. One is, we're not sure that we understand everything that Transition Putney is doing. We kind of hear things around the edges, but how do you find out uh, all of the things that Transition is, is up to uh, these days? So we thought this might be an opportunity to kind of quickly uh, run through kind of the scope of what we've uh, become involved in in the last year and three quarters. Uh, and then the second piece was um, that people said at this visioning session is uh, how, how can we uh, be a little bit more involved uh, in the whole process of Transition Putney. Uh, you know, you guys have your core meetings, we kind of hear about these core meetings, are they secret meetings, or what's happening? Uh, they didn't say that, really, but um, how could we uh, make this all a little bit more um, open to the public? So uh, what we said at that meeting two weeks ago was, what we wanted to do was to have some open meetings like this, uh, where we would be sharing what we're doing, but we would also turn it around and say, this is ours. Transition Putney is ours. It's not the core groups. It's ours as a community. What does the community want? What ideas do you have to share with us? And how might you get involved uh, to make these things happen? So a little more transparent, if you will. A little more flow back and forth. And younger people, people talked a lot about that, having younger people in transition. So here we are, we have it right now. <laughs> uh, so this evening, uh, what we're going to do is um, three things. So it's three. <laughs> now let me figure out what those are. Uh, no, we're going to have a little intro, and we have a couple of students from SIT right here. You want to say your names? I'm Jessica. I'm Brenna. Okay. They're both from SIT, and they did some work on transition uh, at the beginning of their foundations course, uh, the first two weeks in the program. And uh, some of your colleagues actually made a, a video, a YouTube video. Were you involved in that at all? No, okay. I actually didn't do that for my project, but okay. I did see a presentation in my class that was done on transition planning. Mm -hmm. So SIT students are getting quite involved in this, and I thought I would share uh, we would share the video that they made, the YouTube video, so that we could all see it. Uh, and Daniel's going to show that. Uh, then we're going to uh, do our typical uh, let's get to know each other uh, kind of thing for three or four minutes. Uh, and then we're going to go into sharing what we collectively know about what Transition Putney is up to. And then we're going to shift gears a little bit and give everybody an opportunity uh, to talk about what they would like to see happening as we move into uh, the beginning of our third year in January. Uh, what other kinds of things should Transition Putney be paying attention to? Uh, and then we'll have a, a closing and, and that'll be it. Sound okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's start out with the YouTube video, uh, thanks to the SIT students. And if somebody can hit the lights back there, that'd be great. How long does that always happen for? What's that? <laughs> Hold on, we'll start again here. So we could probably do two events at once here. We could go around the room during the times when the music isn't playing. <laughs> <laughs> say what we are here for. You know if this is catching up because we can start with. 
something else first. Maybe we can minimize. Why don't you I think start with something passive? else first. Yeah. Okay. Lost. I'll just lost bar. You oh. turn off the. Great. If we could have a few more lights here. <laughs> <laughs> I like the atmosphere, mm. but. <laughs> I hear that's a problem here at the library is the videos don't stream very well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, well. That's one of our first projects. Sounds you like. put them on like the download collision yeah. matter with the internet. We'll get going on that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, often what we do when, when we're starting out in, uh, you know, our events is really take a moment to get to know one another. So what I'd like you to do is to, uh, in a moment, uh, turn to a partner, and since this is about Transition Putney and what Transition Putney has been doing in the last uh, year or so, I'd like you to think about in the last three or four months, uh, or if you'd like to go longer, and think of an event, uh, a Transition Putney event that moved you in some way. Uh, and what I'd like you to do is to get a partner and just talk about that experience. You know, what was actually happening, what event was it, who was there, um, kind of what was the ambiance, what struck you about that uh, particular uh, time, and, um, and just talk about that and take about a minute, minute and a half each, uh, and then we'll just collect uh, three or four of these stories uh, afterwards. But this will give you a chance to kind of connect with what's happening in this community. So, pick a partner. A minute and a half each. Raise your hand and we'll jump in. Okay. Um, Margaret Torrey's uh, Aging Gracefully in Putney, that first um, meeting, um, impressed me because it was such a microcosm of transition town and how it works. An individual in the community identifies a need, makes it happen, people come together, follow, you know, follow the pre-established process, mm -hmm. and with the group it's established, and it's ongoing. Yeah. You know, and it seems effortless, <laughs> kind of, but it, it was for me just like, okay, this is how it works. It's very clear, I, you know, after reading the book and talking, just clarified it. Mm -hmm. Terrific. The process at work. What else? We uh, came up with three things, because the three of us. The Lantern Supper, which was a collaboration mm -hmm. of various organizations and how beautifully that came together. And, and everybody was invested in their own way, and it, was, it just was really lovely. It touched a lot of people, and that was great. And to know that it's the first annual um, is pretty heartening. <laughs> and then we had um, the Farmer's Market, in particular uh, for Paulina, it was the... <coughs> The, a storm was coming, and everybody went into action and took it down and managed it, and nobody got hurt, and nothing flew away. And she said it was like power. How did you put it? It was really good. Power in, in the action of just coming together and figuring out what needed done, and it was done. Uh -huh. And at the same time, um, 
<laughs> Margaret and I were at the pizza reskilling mm. with Michael Wind, and it was great, and we were having such a good time, and we were really engrossed in the learning about the pizza. He was a very good presenter. We were eating lots of pizza. The storm was going on, <laughs> and it was so, um, like we were in this sort of protected place and having a great time. We didn't even realize a tree came down in the yard right next door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <During it. laughs> uh, so there's this commonality of food mm. and coming together around food in some way or another that, mm -hmm. that the three of us spoke to. That's great. Terrific. I'd like to share what, what I heard from Liz, which I was very uh, heartened by. Liz lived in Scotland for the last 10 years in the uh, Finnish community, oh. and she was uh, she was brought to this area and lived in Bradford for a little bit for three months. But then, uh, quickly hearing about transition techniques, decided to move to this community because mm -hmm. she felt so many good things about it. I would move here for the same reason. Though. Sorry, I would be moving here for the same reason. And Michael would be moving here for the same reason. So <laughs> that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Painful, I'm sure. So people mm -hmm. are feeling something. A lot of action over here, a lot of community, some sense that there's some possibility mm -hmm. here in this transition. I came back from Maui. Mm -hmm. right. Do you want to say something? Do you want to tell an anecdote at all? Well, just that I'm interested in the economics and how Putney can be more self-sufficient, mm -hmm. looking for where our dollars go out of the community, looking for how we can find those among us who are of the 1% who will fund the rest of us and all of the things that we need. <laughs> Run the one. I love it. This is really going to go. You know, I'm torn because, you know, this is a protest movement, this whole thing on Wall Street, and I so want to do it. And transition generally isn't about protest, you know, but I may just put on a mask and go out there and say, there you go. Okay, one more. Um, I haven't been to that many events because I have just recently moved here full time. Um, but last spring I went to a sustainable deer hunting workshop and was, I don't think I learned anything I didn't know before at the workshop, but I was really enchanted by how um, social classes of people that often have a hard time mixing really found a lot of common ground at that wow. workshop. And mm -hmm. the locals and the hippies were talking together and having a great time and finding common ground. That was really magical because I think that any transition movement that doesn't include all the people in the town is bound to fail. And so mm -hmm. I, I love that positive energy. That's a good omen to me. That's great. Mm -hmm. And those two guys are coming back and doing more workshops with us. So. Yeah, that's, yeah, awesome. that's great. Okay, so... Uh, some interesting dynamic energy that's happening as a result of this movement that belongs to all of us. We're all making this happen uh, in our town. And I remember uh, the first celebration we had at, uh, at the community garden uh, a year ago this past summer. You know, the garden truly was, you know, our first uh, like action, you know, uh, that we took. And to me, that was just a symbol of what transition Putney is. It's a symbol of the fact that we can, somebody can say, Howie, Howie Prusak can say, uh, what I want to see is a community garden in this town across from the Putney Co-op, and we can make that happen. Yeah. Uh, and it seems like what you're saying about Margot's uh, group uh, and the other things that are happening, bringing people together from all diverse sections of town, uh, diverse areas of town, backgrounds, uh, we can make happen. It's all in our hands. So let's go around uh, and we'll use the talking piece. Say your name, say where you're from, and one phrase or sentence uh, about Transition Putney, for example, or the Transition Movement, for example. Uh, I'm Paul Lavasser, I'm from Putney. And um, what mm -hmm. I'm, so my phrase is working together for cultural change. That's why I do this work. Janice Baldwin, Putney. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, finding new ways to create community. Joan Bowman, Putney. Living in the forest on top of Putney Brook. Seeing mm -hmm. the moon. 
and having my own garden. Kate Williams, um, East Emerson, and continuing good work. Evan Diamond, East Emerson, Kate's fiance. <laughs> Came here with, with her and just kind of fell in love, so. <laughs> <laughs> the almost newlyweds. <laughs> uh, Tiffany Putney. Sherry Hawkins Putney. Um, what I what I feel about Putney and transition is incredible learning and growth. Mm -hmm. Alice May is also Putney. Um, a plea for those who are aging and who isn't to join Margot in the aging in Putney group. Mm -hmm. I'm to read. I live here in Putney and. Um, mm -hmm. One of many things I enjoy about the transition of Putney meetings is being here at these meetings with all of you. Uh, Yada Clausen, and I live in Putney, but you wouldn't know it for the last year because I've been away for 11 months. And um, what I enjoyed during those months was reading the emails about what you were doing here <laughs> and just imagining what it was going to be like when I got there. Wonderful to see it even bigger and more alive than I left. Sylvia Romberg, um, Westminster West, Great and Greater Putney. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think just hearing people in the community try to articulate what they want a community to be. Mm. Margaret Tarmy, uh, I live in Putney. And for me, Transition Putney has been, um, I, I've lived here for many, many years, but Transition Putney has somehow made this more my home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, my name's Paulina, Pauline Messenger. I live here in Putney just uh, a few hundred yards away. And I just love Transition Putney. For me, it's, it's a kind of love. That's, that's why I'm here. Robin O'Brien, also of Putney, and um, I think Transition Town is about people sharing the tools of living and the skills to use them. And it's really pretty wonderful to be in a place that has that sharing ability. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> My favorite thing was the chicken coop tour. Debbie Lazar Putney. And uh, I'm trying to grow things in the community garden. A Nick Paul, Brada Bro, Greater Putney. <laughs> <laughs> Being a part of Transition Putney for me is being more than just myself. It's being a part of something, being a part of a community, and um, having knowing a friendly face around town. Um, Mary Murphy Putney, as of about six weeks ago. Um, I also moved to Putney for love. Um, and I want to be involved with Transition Putney for community and empowerment and self-sufficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Sam Bat. I'm from SAT. It's in Bolton. Mm -hmm. I lived in Bangalore. <laughs> um, working here, I'd like to like to do the like, promoting ways to eradicate old habit of energy dependency. Uh, Michael Billingsley, um, also of uh, Greater Putney, and moving uh, my business here now in a matter of weeks rather than months, um, and myself hopefully to follow soon. And the uh, idea that sustainable living here, as developed in this workable community, will become a model for the larger world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Liz Rogers. Um, recently moved to Putney, it was six weeks ago. <laughs> and, um, so still brand new, getting to know you all, and very passionate about 
deepening connections with each other locally and with the land. Hi, I'm Ron Solberg. I live in Brattleboro. And I find the transition movement, which is fairly new to me, uh, quite fascinating. And um, and I've been working a little bit with some of the surveys that have been um, manning the stations where the surveys are given. And uh, it's just fascinating hearing the responses and, and seeing the, uh, the energies that come forth from the people. And there's such diversity and there's such, um, uh, it's, it's just a fascination. And so there'll be opportunity to have this many times. <laughs> uh, Richard Burbridge, uh, originally from Illinois, now in Greater Putney of Broderboro. <laughs> um, what, I, what I love about the transition movement is, is the inspiration of the positiveness of just the entire movement. And it's, it's really crucial in this time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, for a long time now, I, I, keep, I always keep the same, the same image that one day I learned that in your brain, what makes you intelligent is not the neurons per se, but it's the connections between them, the synapses, you know what I mean? And since the beginning, I just have this image that that's what transition is about. We have all those neurons and we're all fabulous. And, but it's just the connections that are going to make us an intelligent community. So transition is, is making this connection and I just find that, and it's doing it very well. And I just find that really amazing. Name? Our name is Simon Renaud. From <laughs> from France, no, from Putney. <laughs> from Putney, I've been in this community for four years. Um, right now, SAT student, doing a project, knowing, uh, getting to know what is uh, transition partner doing. Maybe if we can also adapt to our country, Tanzania. Mm -hmm. I come from the slopes of the mountain, Kilimanjaro. You are welcome. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. My name is Jessica. Um, I'm originally from New Hampshire. I've been living in Brattleboro for a little over a month now. I'm also an SIT student, so we're doing this project together. And from what I've heard and seen so far of Transition Putney, I would say that it's people working together to live as sustainably as possible. Jesse De La Rosa, Putney. Um, common needs, uncommon growth, inner transition. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel Hofitz, Putney. And what I like best about the transition movement here is the, is the ability for us to hold a vision in our collective minds and then see that vision take root and, and become reality. I think it's just, it's a fascinating process. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you all. So we do hold this uh, collectively for sure. Um, and at this time I, I really want to acknowledge the SIT students, the uh, SIT Graduate Institute. So just stand up if you're from SIT. have been working uh, day and night for Transition Putney uh, for a long time. Um, Kate uh, and Anik uh, worked for a full year, 20 hours a week, add up the hours uh, that they put up into their internship to make this work for us uh, as a community. Um, Margaret uh, wrote her capstone paper uh, on the transition movement and how people have been affected. <coughs> she captured stories just like you told here tonight uh, in a wonderful document that's available on our website. Uh, let's see, who else is here? We have two students that really represent uh, a whole new batch of students that have arrived. 24 of them uh, studied the transition movement in the first two weeks of the program uh, and made presentations in groups of uh, six, was it? Four, four, to four to five. Four to five. 
uh, made presentations to their five or six groups there that they were uh, a part of. Uh, so let's see, who else haven't I captured here from, oh, Sambat, uh, yes, of course, uh, Sambat and Rich uh, are interns with us now. They'll be with us uh, until January, February, March, uh, something like that. And we have another intern uh, who is living up in uh, Hanover, uh, and she's in charge of events, Diana. Greater Putney. Uh, greater Putney. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and she just wanted to come and work with the transition movement, a grassroots movement that she heard was absolutely terrific. She has another internship, uh, but she said, I'd love to you know, pitch in and do what I can for transition as well. So let's give these guys a hand. <laughs> Okay, and that is the segue into, keep your fingers crossed, uh, a, a uh, YouTube video made by uh, a group of SIT students uh, early in September. And Daniel uh, has a starring role in here. That's a projected warm back up here. You might just have music first and then video. Something changed for me once I read the transition book, drank the Kool-Aid, so to speak. I began to see the way that we all put roadblocks up, cycles of negative thought, and these prevent the change we want to see happen. I have begun to realize that we can change the world in which we live just by thinking differently. We can vision and create a better place to live, from dust to abundance, from subsistence to sustainability, from isolation to community, we can join together and make Putney a better place. That is why there is such a pace to the transition movement. People have long realized something is not right with the world. The movements that started in the 60s are blooming again, but this time we transform and transcend rather than fight and demonstrate. We need to do this work for our souls, for our children, and for our planet. The time to act is now, so join the movement. Hurrah! <laughs> There's more, but we cut it out. I mean, 
few syllables we had to remove just to make it <laughs> stream correctly. I thought that was great. <laughs> that, was that was really great. Great picture to you. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting. The stories are similar to the stories that we just told here, or here uh, which is very interesting. Oh, great. We've got that. Okay, so uh, shifting into, you know, what has Transition Putney been doing? So when we get together at our meetings, uh, core meetings, which last sometimes two and a half hours, and I don't know, people, Robin, tell us, what's the feeling <laughs> in a core meeting? Oh my God, uh, there's, there's a tremendous sharing and um, like, the, the, just this, this welling of concern for the community and like feeling like we can do something and that there's energy percolating all around and that the, that willingness to come together and make it better is exciting stuff. Yeah. And the end with the song. Margaret, do you want to add anything about what it's like being, since we meet at your house oftentimes? Yeah. Um, it's very interesting. It, there seems to be this flow of energy that we, we spend a lot of time actually very intensively discussing things, but it always gets a little silly it, it, <laughs> um, towards, towards the end. Do, yeah, do it's like it go, yeah, we get, we'll get intense, like it's, you know, we can get there, but we get a euphoric as well. Yeah, I think that must be what it is, and then we do often find a, a song to sing here. <laughs> we do. It's great. Yeah, and we have had some, you know, clashes as any group would, uh, of course. And the wonderful thing is that people have really stayed in the group and stayed together and worked things out. And at the end, it is. It's, all, it's that euphoria that happens when you've really been willing to stick it out and really listen to one another and come to a group decision that really makes sense for everybody. Uh, and oftentimes people say at the end, wow, I feel so refreshed. I feel like I'm in love <laughs> with this group, with this, what we're doing. So it, it's really, it's a delightful thing. And I think, um, you know, in, in many ways, the group kind of carries what we hope the spirit of the movement is all about. Uh, so it's been fun. I think we were dancing at the end once as well. Yes. We yes. have been Good dancing. Dance and maybe we can get uh, Margaret to sing our favorite song <laughs> <laughs> at the end of this meeting. But uh, that's to give you a taste of the meetings themselves. But what we talk about are the projects that the Transition Company is involved in. And I'm not going to go through all of these. I mean, there's uh, several pages. Um, and I'd be glad to put this up on the website so you can see the things that we're involved in. But I thought we would start, um, I'm, I'm going to, there's several different categories. Farms and food, education and schools, uh, energy, uh, the economy, health and wellness, uh, nature connection, growing old and Putney, timeshare project, uh, artist group, and uh, homesteading. Okay, so um, we're going to do a fast-paced thing here, hopefully, uh, which will be I'm going to name a category, and you guys, n not core members, but others, can just kind of call out what you know about that. Okay, so what we're going to try to do is just collect what we know about that in terms of what Transition Putney has been doing. And many of you are involved in these projects. When we get to the economy, asset mapping is in there. Uh, when we're talking about food and uh, farms, uh, the market is in there. You didn't mention reskilling. You didn't mention reskilling. Reskilling, yes. Okay. That actually is in here as well. Okay. Good. Okay, so uh, non-core members first. Fast pace, call out what you know. Uh, then I'm going to put up a slide here which lists the things that are here and I'm going to give uh, people who are core members an opportunity to briefly in about this many seconds explain which each one of the ones that maybe people missed uh, explain those so that we know what they are and then move on to the next category which will be education and schools so are you ready mm -hmm. 
This is like a, a TV game show. <laughs> uh, so farms and food, what are the projects that you know about that? Farmer's Market. Farmer's Market? Green School, farm. School, school to table, to farm to school, the greenhouse absolutely. Project? The greenhouse project? The greenhouse project? How about that? Yep. Mm -hmm. so, Community garden? Community garden? Gleaning? Gleaning? Mm -hmm. Yes, many of our uh, people participate in that. That's right. Anything else? Okay, here's the slide. Let me just do this. Okay, so core group. So we did uh, community garden, farmer's market, farm to school. Uh, food shelf. Good, you guys, food shelf. Could you just say something quickly about what these the other ones are? Food shelf, um, well with the food shelf, um, we now have a steering committee. We meet monthly to strategize what our plans are for the future, including fundraising, uh, food raising, and um, being a good neighbor. That's great. And Anika has been central, helping the neighbors. central to this in that she represented Transition Putney uh, on the food shelf. Uh, do you want to say something about rapid food assessment? Like rapid food assessment three sen three sentences. Three sentences. <laughs> it is about interviewing. Uh, Making an assessment of what the food situation is in Putney, mm -hmm. um, in the Putney community, and to do that, we interviewed. Uh, we actually ha facilitated little circles of people where we engage the conversation around food and food issues, and especially food food security in Putney. And out of these little circles, we're hoping that some projects will be born. I think including we visited the middle school and spoke to the right. asset council, so mm -hmm. sixth, sixth, seventh, and eighth school graders, school. and that was really good stuff. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. And again, this is looking at the diversity of the community, economic diversity, et cetera. Are we are we really addressing everyone's needs, <coughs> which you had brought up? I think. And Very one <coughs> one other thing, I'm not sure it really fits here, but the chicken the annual chicken coop tour mm -hmm. um, gives people an opportunity to learn more about raising chickens and to see how other people are doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So lots of reskillings around food and farms uh, and farming, which I happen to put under homesteading as a, as a burgeoning uh, group. Could I add something? Yes. Just because um, we're at the end of the 23 weeks of farmer's market. We'll still have four this winter. But today we had um, a farmer's market board meeting, a final board meeting where we were able to look at finances. And I just wanted to announce that over the summer, uh, there was fifty-two thousand dollars spent mm -hmm. at the farmers market. Fifty-two thousand mm -hmm. dollars that we're brought into this community, mm -hmm. and that otherwise would have. So, with the money, money is just a way to give us an idea of how much community was built at the farmers market during the last twenty-three weeks. Mm -hmm. So, I just want to say that it's a very satisfying project. That's absolutely true. Yeah. Uh, uh, can I say something about the community garden? Yep, briefly, real briefly. It's really humbling how much work it is okay. to grow your own food throughout a season and to prepare for next season's growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yep. Can, well, can, you talk talk about, <coughs> can you talk a little about the Land and Farmer Match Program? Yes. Uh, the Land and Farmer Match Program has come up a number of times in that uh, young people have expressed an interest in being able to farm here in Putney, but they can't afford to buy land. So we have approached a number of people, Bern Grubinger, uh, Hans Estrin, and a number of others, and we're trying to, this is a slow process, but we keep it on the burner, keep it active. There's many people in Putney who have land, who I've already talked with, who would be willing to, if the right people were there, to basically do a, a very low cost lease uh, to young people who can't afford uh, to buy the land to farm so that we can get more farmers on the land producing more food here. Uh, and that's what we would love to see. Uh, and that's what we keep, one of the things we keep working on. Greenhouse project, can you explain that? <coughs> well, the greenhouse project uh, finally has a very uh, practical uh, representation at the, at the community garden. We just built, uh, after the third, uh, 10 by 12 greenhouse and we're um, 
putting forward this project of, uh, in partnership with SIT, of basically helping people to extend their season, the growing season, by um, we have come up with um, the design of a low-cost greenhouse where we recycle a lot of the material. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's cool. the idea is to, the idea <coughs> is to have it be a neighborhood greenhouse project to invite people to build their own greenhouse in neighborhoods to buy it together and to grow food together and to raise the greenhouses a little bit the same way um, barns used to be raised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Where Sorry. are where are they? So one is at my place. I built a prototype last year. Uh, another one is at Robert King's uh, up on Joy, Joy Road. And the third one is this new one at the community garden that's going to have some plastic we put on it. Um, uh, and if there's a lot of interest in the community garden, we're, we're keeping the option of maybe having more there next year. Mm -hmm. Great. $200, $250. Uh, get three uh, members and you're paying under 100 bucks a piece. Uh, and you could have a greenhouse and extend the growing season and grow yourself a thousand dollars worth of greens or whatever. It's, it's a great investment. Uh, one other thing is the local boar group. Uh, Claire Wilson and her group have done local boar potlucks. They've been doing local, local boar potlucks at the Contra Dance uh, that Aiden Oy Hayes does. It's a collaborative effort to get lots of people into Pierce's Hall, a wonderful treasure uh, here in Putney, and also getting people to sign up for the local board challenge. We had 85 people last year. We hope to have over 100 this year uh, to make that commitment. Okay, next topic. You ready? <laughs> energy. What are the projects that uh, Transition Putney is doing with energy? Just call out anything that you know about. The Green Bike Project. Green Bike Project. Daniel Hall. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Green Bike Project. <laughs> the conference or summit? Uh, the uh, energy, okay, the economic summit, which has a lot to do with energy that Daniel uh, put together. Absolutely terrific. The matching funds um, ACE project, I think it's called. Yep. Yeah. PACE and ACE projects. Okay. Sacketsbrook uh, Hydro uh, Exploration. Okay, Sackett Sacketsbrook Hydro Exploration. These are the kind of things that are kind of on the edge that are great possibilities. What else? Sustainability Center. The Sustainability yes. Center. <laughs> yes. Sometimes called the Baskerville Project and several visions uh, for that. Sustainability Center. Okay. Uh, so I have a few things up here, not a lot. I know I don't have everything, so add anything that uh, isn't here. Where's my little person? There you go. Whoops, that was local. Oh. Okay. Oh, no, you what don't want to use the arrows. Yeah. Oh, good. It's not in the same order as your Yeah, I know. I, I, I think it, I hope it's the only one. Close your eyes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, bike project, uh, ACE, and PACE. So, the solar coaching project, um, a lot of people don't know about. Another SIT student uh, who's doing. Uh, kind of an internship fellowship program with us. Uh, Nicole uh, Davis is uh, available to work with anyone who thinks they might want to put solar on their house. She's a trained engineer, mm -hmm. uh, also is getting her master's from uh, SIT, and she is absolutely terrific. She's worked with Peter Thorell and others to gather information and to support anybody who wants to put uh, solar on their house. So. Uh, I will be sending out her information, but in the meantime, if you would like to have a conference, uh, consultation with her, everything's free, obviously, uh, just let me know and I'll match you guys up. Um, the solar education speakers and films, basically what Daniel's <laughs> been doing, Peter Thurow coming here, educating people about uh, solar and, and other things. What's ACE? <coughs> what, what? Ace. What's Ace. Ace and Pace. Ace, uh, Ace is the accelerated clean energy program that uh, Putney won a grant to effect effectively create a pilot Pace program, but Pace was stalled nationally, and so we repurposed the grant and effectively are giving money away, matching efficiency Vermont rebates for home weatherization. And so far we have 16 people that have signed up. We could easily do another 16 people. We have enough funding for that. So if there are people in Putney that haven't joined the ACE program, please speak to me if you're interested. Okay. So next category, education. 
Okay, and uh, I'll give you a hint on this one. This is a group of uh, six uh, heads of schools from Putney that came together after the last economic summit, summit with, uh, yeah, it's going to be after this. Uh, after Michael Schumann came, uh, people, uh, actually it was Mar Marshall Leader, who's a part owner in the uh, community garden space, uh, said, since she was working at the grammar school, I'd love to get the heads of schools together. And so the heads of schools came together, and a lot of projects came out of that. Uh, any ideas on what those might be? These are the hidden projects that people don't know about. <laughs> One now. of them that's wonderful is just a calendar, a shared yeah. calendar that they've come up with so we, as merchants, know when to expect <laughs> extra people in town. It's a, it's a simple one, but yeah. very helpful. Yeah. Emily Jones, uh, head of uh, Putney School, definitely committed to supporting the uh, economy of Putney, and she's going to be there tomorrow morning at the Putney uh, Jobs Breakfast, and she's going to talk about connections between these six schools and the economy here. Uh, as you probably all know, uh, education is an economic driver in this community. Uh, six schools, uh, a lot of people employed, students coming, spending their money here. Uh, we really rely on them, uh, and Emily and others are, are really <coughs> pushing to be more integrated into uh, the community here, and particularly around the economy, and doing it consciously. Um, internships? Possible internships, yeah. The service learning project, uh, I'll just talk about briefly. Um, Aaron, who works at the Green Valley School in this a uh, group of six heads of schools and, and some of the faculty uh, suggested that we start a Putney Corps, a Putney Corps mm -hmm. in Putney, like a Peace Corps, mm -hmm. and would involve all of the kids in the six schools here. And we pitched the idea to the heads of, heads of schools, Aaron did, and everybody said, wow, what a great idea. We've all got kind of service learning community service programs. What if we all work together? So that is being worked on now and uh, the heads have uh, kind of appointed their uh, service learning uh, gurus at each school to come together, but uh, more important, just as important, Emily Jones suggested that, well, let's get the kids together with no adults and let them hammer out what they think this, a program would look like that would be a Putney Corps, and then they can come together with the adults and create something, and we're going to go for funding. The schools have already uh, committed uh, a certain amount of money, and they feel as though this would be absolutely unique. What other school, what other school district in the country has put six schools together to create uh, a, a service learning program? Well, uh, a quick possible resource mm -hmm. is that for about a year and a half, I was. Uh, uh, director of something called the Youth Action Coalition in mm. Amherst, which is on that model. Uh -huh. And there are five schools there, plus the colleges. But right. in this case, it was all the youth. Mm -hmm. So Stacy Leonard, who's now come back, I took over when she was doing uh, pregnancy. It's mostly girls, but we had youth on our board. That so is, they shaped the that's decision. Right. So, so we need to chat, you need to give, and I'll on pass on those on to this committee that's putting it together. And talk about what they do. Absolutely. So huge opportunity for kids to come and do service here and uh, for kids to get more involved in transition and, and other programs here. Mm -hmm. So youth is something that we've been really, mm -hmm. you know, we haven't been able to figure that out, but it's kind of coming together. And then, interestingly today at Landmark College, I was invited to go up there and talk about transition uh, with the students because they wanted to hear about what this transition movement is doing and they have a service uh, learning a service program. Some of you may remember Jay Rivera, who started that at Landmark. That is being reborn, and students really want to know how they can contribute to the town. So, you know, Transition Putney is yeah. saying what they always say, great idea, how can we help you? <laughs> so, uh, very exciting. So, health and wellness. Okay, a number of things happening with health and wellness. This group uh, started uh, a, about a year ago, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. let's just toss out some ideas on what's happening with health and wellness. 
Free clinics. Free clinics. Free clinics. Okay. Alternative health care or not alternative because it's not an alternative. What do we call it? Complementary. Complementary <laughs> holistic health care clinic. Mm -hmm. Free clinic mm -hmm. is happening in this town right now. What else? It's been a mindfulness meditation group which is restarting. Yeah. Joan Collister with her mindfulness uh, meditation or mindfulness practice. Mm -hmm. Just collaboration with lots of practitioners. Collaboration with lots and lots of practitioners. Yeah. Anything we can add to that? Let's see if I got it. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Speakers, films, mindfulness practice, uh, Putney Integrated Healers Associated Association, PHA already existed. They're providing actually this free clinic. Is that right? We've done two different free clinics, but yeah. yes. Okay. And we've done rescaling workshops too. That's right. So okay. raise your hand if you're involved uh, at all in, in this group. I know that you Just are. You. Okay, great. And you have <laughs> okay, great. So lots in health and wellness. And as, as we all know, uh, in a time of crisis where there really are no petroleum products available to us, uh, the traditional uh, allopathic medi medicines that we take are all uh, dependent on, on petroleum. Uh, so we're going to need to find other, let alone the supplies and the energy requirements of hospitals. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah, right. Had, and then remember also, Dee Pierce came and spoke to us. Mm -hmm. Dee Pierce was amazing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, wasn't she amazing? Wow. Yeah. And you guys were terrific in setting that up. So these things are happening. I mean, you guys are doing most of what's happening here. And, and a quick little fact is that in Katrina, one of the issues that was made things very difficult is that the medical uh, medications for everyone, that is the first responders and the helpers and that sort of thing, all ran out at five days because uh -huh. that's the supply in any major metropolitan area of that's any right. prescription drug. Mm -hmm. So the police and the doctors <coughs> and the nurses didn't have their medication, so alternative methods are really important. That's great. Good. So let's do one more, the economy. Mm -hmm. What's happening with the economy? In transition pattern. Michael Schumann. Michael Schumann? Mm -hmm. Expanded time trade program. Mm -hmm. Expanded time trade program. Putney has its own group uh, of the Brattleboro time trade. Mm -hmm. Put the dollars. Put the dollars. Dollars. Yeah, the Putney dollars. dollars, local, local currency. currency. Yeah. Local currency. Daniel Hope. Daniel Hope. <laughs> 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 the Senate. The sec, sec, uh, summit number two, economic <laughs> summit number two, primarily Daniel and also Michael Schumann back to talk about local investing. Anything else? Merchants group. Merchants group. Discover Pipe. Yeah, right. Yeah, job practice. Asset. Asset. The breakfast. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Energy Co-op. Oh, Eisenstein. Economic Co-op 1 and 2, Michael Schumann twice, Mapping Putney Community Assets. How many people are involved in the Mapping uh, Assets program? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, Discover Putney Business uh, Alliance is alive and well and... and uh, uh, meeting tomorrow at 9. Meeting tomorrow. Uh, local Investment <laughs> Funds Group. Really just uh, started coming together with Michael Schumann yesterday, uh, and that will happen. Lots awesome. of speakers, Putney Jobs Practice, local currency, and other things. And okay. last night's meeting was a lot about money, the energy co op. Yes. Um, and uh, investment in uh, alternative en energy. There was a great deal of positive talk about loans and benefits. Absolutely. And local Friday, investment. Friday, we have our last uh, energy, uh, sorry, economic summit event with uh, Bob Barton speaking. Mm -hmm. And we're shifting the time over to a half hour or an hour later, so it starts at 7, if anyone mm -hmm. is planning to come early, because there's a community supper as well. Oh, that's right. right. We want to have overlapping events. Exactly. That's correct. So I'll just go through these. Uh, growing Old in Putney, uh, Margo, uh, Tori's group, we are kind of associates uh, mm -hmm. in that. She's asked us to stay with her on that. Mm -hmm. Nature Connections, primarily with Mark Morey, uh, the Timeshare Project. Uh, lots of speakers, lots of films, an artist group, uh, summer artist in residence program happened this year, it'll happen for the next two or three years, already funded, uh, homesteading group just starting up with uh, speakers and a book group on radical homemaker, reskilling workshops. Uh, Adrian de Guevara is doing a presentation next Monday mm -hmm. on 
uh, connecting spiritually, spiritual connections with the land uh, for homesteaders, uh, the neighborhood greenhouse we talked about. And we've had at least three celebrations uh, as well we like to celebrate. <laughs> okay, so that's, you know, we started in January of 2010. Uh, here we are in October of 2011. <coughs> so we've done a year plus uh, 10 months. Uh, but now we're starting to look at, okay, how about year three? So what we're going to do is give people an opportunity to uh, share an idea uh, that people are interested in bringing to Transition Put Putney in the hopes that there'll be support, maybe in this room, uh, to make your ideas happen. Uh, so we're going to go around the group like we did and give everybody a chance, uh, maybe non-core members first, and then we'll ask core members if they'd like to uh, share something and give, give people an op opportunity to share an idea. And Margaret's going to write these down, right? Uh, so we can put these on <laughs> iPutney and the transi transition like site. So, yeah, great. Thank you for that. So uh, I'm going to let anybody start. Uh, and you may not have an idea, but if you just want to just briefly share something that you are interested and exciting about that's already happening, that's fine. Uh, and these would be kind of brief because we have about 25 or 30 minutes. So anybody can start. I'll give you the talking piece. And we'll go around like this. Yeah. Um, something that I would like to offer and collaborate with through Transition Putney is um, I am a community street medic trainer. And what that means, it's sort of like the grassroots anarchist version of a uh, wilderness first aid course or something like that. It's a curriculum that was developed in 1999 to prepare people who are helping with the protests out in Seattle. Um, but it's been taught all over the continent and probably all over the world since then. And uh, it offers basic medical skills. It's a, a reskilling for you know, community resilience in medicine and medical areas. It allows you to know first aid for basic injuries and illnesses. It allows you to know when something is serious enough that you need to seek advanced medical care and when perhaps it's something you can care for yourself or observe for a while. Um, it has herbal protocols because uh, it's illegal for all of us to prescribe medicine, but it's totally illegal for us to give each other herbs. Uh, and the herbs are something that can be grown locally and produced within the community and create a local economy as well and be available if transportation of everything breaks down. Um, and it's a really wonderful community building tool. Um, the people in my workshops that I've taught so far have uh, tended to create lasting groups and guilds and um, medic you know, groups within the community that will then meet and uh, support each other and go to protests together if they choose, but all of this is not just focused on protests. Um, the main goal of the, of the curriculum as it's written is uh, to prepare people to work at protests and in areas of civil unrest, which civil unrest can happen anywhere at any time, so it's good to be prepared. And uh, also p providing medical aid for natural disasters which we just had one of recently, and uh, for festivals and gatherings, which I imagine Transition Putney will bring more and more of to the area. So I think that it's a really good fit, and I think that people around here would be interested in it. Um, the support that I would need would be help advertising and recruiting students for this class, would be a maximum of 20 students. It's a two and a half day class. It's like a big, thorough training. It's not just a, a few hours. Um, it really leaves you with a lot of confidence and a lot of hands-on practice. And so I would need a classroom space for that as well. And I imagine transition funding can help. Can you tell us your, <coughs> your name again? My name is Mary Murphy. I am uh, an EMT. I just signed on to volunteer with Putney Fire. And um, I'm a wilderness EMT as well. I've led backpack interns for many years and have medical experience through that. Um, and I'm a street med trainer. Wow. Welcome to Great. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely fits so in with resilience. I'm wondering if uh, oh. there isn't a connection with yes. you guys. Yeah. And so there's a working group on health and wellness. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can check in with Joan and Jesse. And if, uh, I think we need to kind of work to get oh, that yeah. group together and how we, mm -hmm. how we would actually do that. But why don't you start some discussions there and then we can 
maybe this would be a great chance to pull that group together and that sounds very make exciting. some decisions. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, terrific. Or, yeah. uh, I'm just wondering if someone has um, put forth the idea of a community medicinal herbal garden. Mm, the nice, garden. nice name. Mm. Nice a garden? Mm. A garden. Yeah. A medicinal there, herbal there, are, access to there was one, a gardener who wanted to do that in our community garden and Unfortunately, she didn't find the time this summer to really do that. So we have some space. Oh, okay. Is that something you'd be interested in? Would you be interested in doing that? Yeah. Okay. With, you know, collaboration. Yeah, okay. My partner's also an herbalist, and I think she would be interested in that project as well. Great. So you why don't you say your name? Liz. 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 Yeah. Liz Roger. Yeah. Liz. Say, say your names before you speak, mm -hmm. and then we'll know who made these suggestions. Mm -hmm. That's great. And Liz, you're going to want to collaborate with Jada Berg. Jada Burr? Mm -hmm. no. Is that the person who was okay. my partner? That's your partner. Oh. Yeah, and Jada's oh. actually on You're the. Uh, <laughs> Jada. She's on the health and wellness group, too, yeah. so you guys yeah. all fit together, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's great. great. Michael. Uh, well, yeah. I'll, I'll add myself to that. I'm a former EMT and also um, do uh, non traditional healing with song and um, have worked, as some people have seen. Uh, with people with HIV and AIDS and cancer and help found one of the support groups to use non-traditional healing methods and um, lifestyle methods for people working uh, dealing with AIDS. Um, mm -hmm. Primarily what I'll be doing here is you know, when I move my business here will be with music and lifestyle stuff. But where I wanted to introduce myself here was um, the concept of something uh, we call uh, with a small group of people I'm working with in other parts of Vermont called shared sufficiency as opposed to self-sufficiency, uh -huh. which is the idea of a community that has as its entire shared goal that the town will survive and protect its least members, and those with disabilities, those for reasons of age, either elders or young, or um, other um, issues of, of dis, you know, disability or whatever, that um, everyone, the least of them first, would be supported by the entire community through any kind of difficulty, uh, whether it be natural or political or um, economic or en energy difficulties. Mm -hmm. And in order to foresee this, I uh, have been working with FEMA and NASA and a number of other uh, larger entities to try and assess what's actually coming down. I'll be giving a talk about that here on the 15th of November uh, using the best documents I have from FEMA. Mm -hmm. and looking at it that way, but the solution is definitely not the one proposed by FEMA or by the Obama administration, but rather one where everyone would have a different set of skills that they would have deliberately chosen as a group so that all the needs of the community would have been assessed together as a group and people would choose an alternative occupation that they would use in the event of an electrical, a long-term electrical outage or natural catastrophe. Stupid. Mm -hmm. so that they would know that all the needs of the community be, would be met together and they would shift to that, that, that skill, whether it was pulling a team of horses or uh, doing uh, non-traditional dentistry mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and would, would be available to do that in the event that, that uh, medicines and, and, and things couldn't be trucked in and, and there would be no electricity. Wow. Wow. That is great. Thank you very much. What I love... Uh, that seems to be happening in more and more of the meetings that I go to like this is that people are thinking of the community. Mm -hmm. They're not just mm -hmm. thinking about themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, in hard times, it's about us. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, non-poor. So, <coughs> Oh, next month is Thanksgiving, so how about uh, Occupy Baking? Oh, nine cores. So we're gonna we're gonna oh, okay. <laughs> Guess we run out of time. Um, <laughs> two things. Um, one uh, kind of questions, uh, but um, one is a uh, community wood seller. Mm -hmm. Frustrated because my cellar has like got a wood stove in it. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> okay, well, it's not going to work. Um, and yeah, I was spurred on by the thinking of the community greenhouse. Um, we have the land for it, um, but it's just that idea. Um, so I'm open to talking to people about that. 
and wondering since there are five or six of us who are new to Putnam, even though some of us are from the area, is there a newcomer group or a way to mm -hmm. welcome mm -hmm. newcomers yeah, and help people, you know, pave the way to yeah. become part of? Because I know it can be hard to break in if you're not used to that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Great so, ideas. Um, I'd be interested in talking about that more. I'm Janice Baldwin. What did they used to call that? Would you move into a neighborhood? Welcome wagon. Welcome wagon. Welcome wagon. Welcome wagon. Welcome wagon. <laughs> Why didn't I take the stone? I had an idea, but welcome wagon. And I went back to the 1950s, just like that. Um, <laughs> that's when we need a transition. I mean, what it look like? Drawn by a horse. A literal wagon. <laughs> literal wagon. <laughs> heart and soul. It's my thing. Mm -hmm. I keep coming back to you, Paul. I want to see heart and soul re revised here. Okay. Tell me more about that. What, what that would you like, like to see happen? Where is it? Well, I, I just think it's real important. I loved what we did with Fred Taylor the two oh. times, and Jen came over from Transition Keen, yeah. and we sat in a group. Um, and recently, Jesse uh, brought Carolyn Baker to us, mm -hmm. who was visiting from Colorado, and she really talked about resiliency and the inner self. Mm -hmm. And Jesse, can you help me a little bit tonight? Um, Carolyn's message about building from within. We're all so um, worried about the catastrophes that are coming, and what she's really talking about is just really core resilience and the love and the grounding that we all need. I mean, Adrian's doing it with connecting us virtually to the earth, but I'm just mm -hmm. seeing something um, with a core group of us coming together and bringing our hearts and opening our souls to one another. Um, and continuing to move. I sit in Sangha with a group at the Quaker meeting uh, who honor the, the lineage of Thich Nhat Hanh, mm -hmm. and that's been so enriching for me every Monday night. Mm -hmm. um, and many of us go to Quaker meeting here, we belong mm -hmm. to that, and that enriches us. Um, but I'm wondering for those that are more secular, mm -hmm. if there isn't something that we can offer in the community, and I know that um, Transition Montpelier has a pretty active group. And they were the ones mm -hmm. who actually brought care of it. Yes. And we kind of borrowed it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm done. Okay, that's Isn't great. there a local singing group? Wouldn't that be part of the well, yeah, local community? Local singing group. Yeah. 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 I don't think that was mentioned, right? Yes. Yeah, well, that, she was here for a while and then oh, it's gone? she was gone. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. But uh, coming back, what we're yeah, very yeah, interested in good. doing is supporting yeah. uh, working groups like the heart and soul group. Mm -hmm. So if there's four or five key people who want to get together and create a working group, mm -hmm. and then you invite people in, you create events, you bring films, you do that kind of thing, we'd like to support you in that okay. and provide you with guidelines, norms that Kate has made up for how these groups will work, etc. cetera. Uh, so that's what we're prepared to do as we enter this next year. And, okay. and, uh, and Janice is Janice gonna is, <laughs> and Janice, you might very well fit into the um, homesteading group, yeah, for example. Already, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, was interesting that would that. be mm -hmm. perfect. My fiancé is very humble, so he's not going to bring up any ideas. But he had one brilliant idea recently for his own workplace, and I think it could definitely be expanded into the working group that you've created with the six heads of schools, mm -hmm. where you look at children who have been labeled problem children or mm -hmm. high-need children and really write down all your observations and that goes in their record for every single school, something to really pay attention to so that you get a feel for every student coming in your doors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brilliant idea and you're a humble person, I understand. A blueprint really and you know also to say what we've tried and you know what hasn't worked, what has and what, we, what still needs to be tried. Right now what's going on in my school at, at Mombi Bush at uh, the Barrow Retreat is that we're doing uh, yes, no, it was something else. I don't know the name of this, we're also doing some echoes, which has to do with um, a lot of other stuff, but, um, and it's dealing with, um, well, they have a, kind of like a food pyramid, but it's a regular pyramid, and it's talking about the first two levels are your normal average kids, mm -hmm. and the third and fourth are usually the ones that have a little bit more trouble. Mm -hmm. And it's about, you know, what they're trying to do, maybe they're trying to um, escape from doing something, mm -hmm or trying to obtain something, and it's really about what can you do to maybe not... Get, Work with the kid. Well, to, you know, a good solution to turn these negative behaviors into more positive behaviors, you know, mm -hmm. to place. 
That's good. So cool. I was wondering, you know, maybe we can create this blueprint about what we've done. What instead of you know the kid going out with the high school and all that. And the same going. things over and over and over again. That's cool. So. Thanks. That's good. Mark, Dr. Lewis Malmadrona was here with Mark Morey talking about that mm -hmm. kind of integration into the community with, mm -hmm. with people that are labeled as, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Another heart and soul person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It would be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. My dream and my vision is something that's, um, I hope the Sustainability Center, the Sacketsburg Sustainability Center, <laughs> can really get um, many more people involved with the, with the Brainstorming and, and helping to get it off the ground, and, and, and um, I think it's a huge bonus for the community in, in terms of learning and opportunities, energy. Um, ha and there's just so many possibilities in, in this um, concept, and I hope more people, when we start to announce meetings, um, can just come and find out what we're all about and join up. <laughs> Well, I'm interested in economics, and I think that asset mapping of so many different levels of what is here in Putney is just really important. Well, I don't really have any uh, really ideas, but I'll take the time of holding the stone. Question about something was mentioned earlier about the Putney time trade. Is that something separate from Browborough or part of it? No, it's not separate. Uh, but we thought that it would be good to have uh, people recognize yeah. that are from Putney that there's a group here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Oh. Um, I was really excited by the idea of people picking an alternative skill to work on because I mean a lot of a lot of us have had 100 alternative skills that sound like a great idea, but it just might give some more focus to picking one, mm. because then you see it as something really useful to the whole community and mm. you know, incre increasing resiliency. Um, a neck. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't heard of it. <laughs> I think that um, one thing that I would like to see more of would be reaching out to other segments in the community um, for uh, greater inclusion. And it can be by having some maybe more reskillings, you know, reaching out to potential people who could teach from outside the community, you know, outside of this tight knit part of the community transition community into um, the larger community, mm -hmm. and um, just more collaborating with other um, organizations in town, and just mm -hmm. knowing what other people are doing. So there's not a lot of overlap, and maybe mm -hmm. just working together. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Did everybody have a chance to say something that was going to? Looking at the time, it's almost 8.30. Deb, do you want to say something? Anything, Deb? No. Okay. Do we have anybody who uh, might help us work with trails for snowshoeing Ooh. Rec or other recreation in the winter? <laughs> no, winter trails so much, but I have a lot of work and trail building experience. Uh -huh. Ward Ogden has done a lot with uh, trails. Uh, so there's a number of people actually in town. I think uh, Diney and Jim Schweitzer at mm -hmm. uh, the bike shop. Mm -hmm. They know where all the trails are. They have them mapped out. Yeah. And I'm thinking about Mary possibly here. I, the youth aspect. I keep bringing it up. I know I'm not the one to drive it, but I have a new team, and there's just. It would be great if there were a transition team. company for teens and new teens, mm -hmm. you know, tweens, teens, and new teens. <laughs> because as some, even just some social aspect to get together and have somebody come and do a cool workshop on mm -hmm. that country, you know, that anything that would grab pizzas and information. Mm -hmm. We would love to see that happen. Green, 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 green. Yeah. 
So Ooh, I like it. <laughs> thanks for jumping in, Robin. Let's let's if if the core have something burning that they want to add, uh, feel free to do that uh, briefly now, uh, so that you have a want to hear your voice too if if you have something to add. Former core, can I bump in? Mm. Uh, let's give them a chance first. Could you? you had well, I think that transportation is a big part of our energy future and also what's going on here. And it touches on many aspects. But one thing that I want to do when I grow up is build electric vehicles of some sort. Mm. Electric cars are rather difficult to, for one person to actually build economically. But uh, electric scooters and electric bicycles are really, really cool. And I've, I've been talking with the West Hill Bike Shop about possibly getting some down there for sale and right. people yeah. to, to ride, to, to try. Like, uh, because once you get on an electric bike and you try it, it's the most amazing feeling. You're driving around right. with wow. this big smile on your face and you realize <laughs> that you can, you can use it like a regular bike and pedal and you can use it like an electric vehicle and go places right. and go oh. for longer distances yeah. than you could otherwise. I love it. I love That's great. I've really cool. also seen some pretty awesome solar golf carts. <laughs> yeah. mm. <laughs> <laughs> at, at Solar Fest, there yes. wasn't a solar electric bike. Yep. Mm. Wow. Solar wow. electric bike. Wow. Sold in Be and Bellows Falls. Wow. Oh. wow. That's great. Well, there's a, there's a bike company selling electric bikes in Bellows Falls, but they weren't mm -hmm. solar, so I'm not sure if they had a special model. Well, that this one was so. solar, I assure you. So Kate wanted to add something quickly. Um, it kind of speaks to what you two were touching on with the crisis, first aid and other things, but um, at, when the hurricane was going on, I was calling people, making sure they were okay. Um, mm. I think we should have a, <coughs> wind, not, if not Wyndham County-wide, Greater Putney-wide, yeah. um, either phone tree or go knock on somebody's door if your cell phone doesn't work to make sure everybody's okay after events mm. like that. Mm. What's that? There's another name for that kind of thing. Mm. Tree? Phone mm. tree? Oh, phone tree, usually, but... Well, elders certainly need yeah. to be looked at. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. One of the greatly overlooked things that, um, as a person with disabilities myself, I have encountered over and over again, and even FEMA hasn't addressed it because they don't have, they haven't hired the regional coordinator for Southern Vermont, is people with disabilities who rely on electricity for their devices, whether it's kidney dialysis or whether it's uh, electric wheelchairs or, or whatever. And there isn't a particularly good inventory. I've asked in Brattleboro how the fire chief or whomever keeps track of that and it's voluntary or else there has to be some kind of assessment. They don't know everybody <coughs> who would be wiped out if there was no electricity for a week. Mm -hmm. no. yeah. Wow. So, so, so to know know that would actually have to be very uh, proactive, I think. Yeah. And that would be a matter of working with Tom Garter, I think, in the fire department, mm -hmm. who yes. is really our emergency manager. But Pet Putney Cares. And Putney Cares. Putney Cares the might be the folks. central location right. for that. Right. That's good. I have another um, thing. Good. I know I've been sort of talking about this on and off for a while, but the idea of having a group of people, maybe young people, um, interviewing older people like Star elders. Core. And it would be yeah. another way to try to bridge the kind of socioeconomic gap because we'd be focusing on people who'd lived in Putney for all these years, you know, mm. who are, who are um, elders. So I, I think that might be a, a good idea. Well, perhaps those two course. ideas could be bridged, <coughs> yes. meaning to say that um, of all the households that are the least known, mm. often include people with the disabilities. If young people were in the interns that we were just mentioning earlier, yeah. were, mm -hmm. were to volunteer for a group to go from door to door, they would find out about the lives of these folks that are often quite rich. Sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of what I'm seeing, Michael, is mm -hmm. that there, there's starting to be some overlaps here. You know, I think as we've grown as an organization and we have a homesteading group, a lot of the reskilling things that we've doing, been doing actually fit in that, and you brought one up, mm -hmm. uh, with, the, uh, with the root salaries, for example. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think, uh, and, and the heart and soul group, you know, you're right, we have done some things around Heart and Soul, but we didn't have a really a group that was responsible for that. And if we wanted to augment that a little bit, if we could get four or five people, three, four or five people who are willing to kind of embrace that and share that with the community, it would be absolutely terrific. And I heard that coming from two or three 
different people here, uh, certainly around health and wellness, mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot happening there. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, uh, working with the health and wellness group and, and giving you guys an opportunity to create your own um, power source, if you will. Because what happened, the way transition is designed is not to have the core team mm -hmm. organizing right. the activities right. mm -hmm. and the events. Mm -hmm. It's for the core team to kind of start out, get things started, and I think we've done a great job of it, you know, in that we have a sense of what can be done and this overlapping is happening. But then within the core group, you might have a representative of the heart and soul group, for example, but the heart and soul group is its own group and they create their own events. Mm -hmm. And there's somebody who rep is represented in the core group so that you can share and find out whatever all the different groups are doing. Mm -hmm. So that's our movement for this year, this coming year, is to really do everything we can to put that model in place mm -hmm. and to do the kind of trainings and norm settings and, and that kind of thing that uh, both Kate and Nick really have worked on uh, mm -hmm. this past year in a wonderful way. So we have some things ready to go. So as you begin to think of, oh, what I'd really like to do is, you know, uh, have a workshop on root cellars, and I've got some great connections for you on that. Uh, think of the group that you might go to and propose that so that the group itself could make it happen because it might be a long time before uh, our group of eight can actually get to it because we've got just so many you can see all the balls we've got going in the air yeah. now. So, so let me just follow on with that and, yeah. and, and point out that there are tons of leadership roles that are mm -hmm. open and, and that we're thinking about the, the core group as well and, and kind of shifting some of that in terms of leadership. So um, if people want to be more involved with Transition Putney and want to step into roles that um, are, are stronger leadership roles, they definitely should tell, you know, make that known because it's all, it's coming up from, it, it's all like us. There is no real uh, group of leaders. It's all just us in the community, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and this is the way it was meant to happen. You know, if you read the handbook, this is the way it's meant to happen. And uh, also, it came up in our visioning group that, that Rich led, uh, and that is people were saying, where are the leadership roles? You know, we're, we're wondering, and you know, maybe we should flatten this out a little bit and not have people kind of looking up to this group of 8 to 12 people who are this kind of mysterious core group. But in fact, it's clear that we have these five or six or seven different working groups and people know where they can go to do their yeah. heart and soul work or their uh, homesteading work or their health and wellness work. Mm -hmm. Yes? I had a couple of thoughts too. Um, I was wondering if maybe with iPutney we shouldn't be talking more about what Transition USA is doing because mm -hmm. I belong to Transition US yeah. and Transition Montpelier I get their newsletters. And then, for instance, there's transition training. Tina Clark and I forgot the guy's name are coming in November to Charlotte to do transition training yeah. for two days. And there might be many of us here in the group who would really love to be trained in the transition movement. Yeah. Um, and also, I remember that Transition Brattleboro was starting up. That's yeah. right, and, and Transition Dummerston. Transition Dummerston. Yeah. Oh my God. There may and even be a training in December in Dummerston. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. those are the kinds of things that I'm thinking that we need to get out more broadly and also for many of us. Mm. To plan ahead, yeah. Because we're, you know, starting to travel and take business in other places. So it would be really nice for me if I could start to get my calendar in place through mm -hmm. the end of the year. Great. So whoever handles that, yeah. that information makes me think of the dissemination. That makes me think of the newsletter, and I think that's the role of the newsletter. So whoever, I, I'm actually not aware of. And actually, that's up for grabs. The newsletter at the moment hasn't really been captured by anybody, and I would love to see somebody grab it, because it, it's really a great tool that this community has really grown to love, and I'd love to mm -hmm. see it continue. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be great to get a grant to be able to mail it to every household in Brittany? Oh, that would be fabulous. 
Mm. And there's money out there. Yeah. There really is. <laughs> So if there's any That's SIT the students everybody. in the room, <laughs> <laughs> so, so right. we don't have enough who, who haven't already joined. <laughs> oh gosh, no, I have my thesis to write. <laughs> any other thoughts on this kind of leadership, this flattening, this idea of uh, uh, more consciously working with the working groups and putting those in, in place and in motion? Any thoughts on that in terms of what that feels like in terms of... Sense. A community? It Go makes ahead. sense. Uh -huh. It makes a lot of sense not to burden you guys with, with trying to keep ahead of all these things that are bubbling up all the time right. mm. and coalescing different collaborations. Yeah. Um, and to give people a ch other people a chance. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, we love what we do. We'd like to share it with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You have a very I have a point of information or a question, I guess, which is, uh, Something I've never been clear about is there um, a way, an official membership of Transition Putney? Have some ha, has it? Is there a point where you either uh, contribute your name or you you get on a list or you make a financial contribution? What what's the yeah. distinguishing? You can do point all those. You can, you can <laughs> all three. You can you can do all all three of those. Yeah. We'll, we'll be collecting over there. <laughs> uh, Margaret, do you want to talk about how we started and and? I know about transition in general, but I just don't know how you're doing it. Maybe we'll answer this question, and then Mary had something to say. Yes, okay. Um, we started out with the idea of members, and people gave anywhere from $5 to considerably more. Um, and we, had, we added their names to our listserv. And then we thought it over, and we thought, well, if there are members, that means there are people who aren't members. members yeah. And we really didn't want to do that. We did not want to have that kind of division between those who are in and those who are out. Mm -hmm. So we just stopped talking about the membership thing. <laughs> um, and it just became, you know, you just put your name down on the list if you want to be added to the list, sir. And you come and you take part if you want to. And you give money um, if you feel like it. and. We started thinking about it more as sort of friends of Transition Putney. Um, and we're all friends of Transition Putney, I think. <laughs> um, do, you, do you have more to add to that? That's it. That's the start. Mm -hmm. So that, that's how we There's ended up where we are. Conversation of the same. I would love to add that it's an ongoing conversation. It is an ongoing yeah. conversation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there has been some thought that because we need, the, we need money to make um, it possible to do more things that maybe it would be a good idea to have people give a little bit of money. I, I don't know. We, we keep going back and forth on this and um, if, if other people have thoughts it would be nice to hear them but let's first hear what Mary has well, to say. Well certainly to match funds sometimes you need to have some evidence that people have been giving you money. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So oh. it, you, you, you must have some hopes that people will. <laughs> yeah, well, we had about $2,000 in donations, either in kind, uh, picnic tables, tents, blah, 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 uh, the first year and spent maybe $3,000 or 3500 And we did 150 events uh, on wow. $3,000 yeah, $3, yeah. or something. <laughs> unbelievable. And this year, I think uh, we've uh, probably gotten $5,000 uh, in mm. contributions, or six, or maybe even seven. Uh, but many of those go for big ticket items. Uh, Mike Schu Michael Schumann's not cheap, and you know, but people donate to that. Um, and so our our operating budget is, you know, in terms of what we actually spend uh, on events and things is is very low. I mean, it's minuscule, and and we in fact truly do need uh, to get a campaign going. And mm -hmm. we've talked about that before. I'd love to talk with you more about that. We feel as though what we really need is a uh, probably a paid position, maybe a half-time position of an office manager who's a face of transition for Transition Putney, who could also organize the volunteers and 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 uh, take care of the events uh, and be that person who's seen as kind of on top of those things. And if there's um, anyone who's a, who has grant writing skills, um, we also would love to talk to you. Yeah. Relative to membership, um, since I was part of Movement for a New Society, which at that point 
Well, I was part of the Philadelphia group, the Philadelphia Life Center. And I think it depends upon how we visualize who we transition fighting are. If we're an anarchist group, as uh, Movement for a New Society was, it really was important to know who the members were because I, an anarchist group can be infiltrated by those who disrupt. And that, you, you really do need to know who are your colleagues. And so, MS was organized by, you could not be a member if you were not a member of a collective. Here we could call it a working group. Mm -hmm. But it, it's just raising an, an even more umbrella discussion. And, you know, I just happen to see that everybody who lives in 05346 is Putney. Mm -hmm and therefore part of Transition Putney. Mm -hmm. um, it's all inclusive. So I don't know whether what I've just said has any merit or bearing on this question of membership. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we want to be infiltrated by everybody. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, disruptive people can be. We're still trying to find non-friends of transition. <laughs> 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 Maybe you'll discover one. <laughs> so let's take still maybe. Looking. Can we get back and Mary had something. Yes, Mary. Oh, yeah, just on the question you posed earlier about how do we make the working groups more empowered. Um, I admit I haven't been to your website in at least six months and maybe spent five seconds on it once, but um, I should go again, and, but I would just say that the website is a really important way of disseminating information, especially if you're trying to attract the younger generations. Mm -hmm. And um, having a contact person's email for each working group on that website enables people to get involved or get in touch and propose a product directly to those people. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to get fancy, you can have like sort of a secretary of each group who would pose like what they're like post what they're working on now sort of all blog style like this is what we're doing and then people know if they want to get involved. Mm -hmm. I, I should add to what Mary said by saying that I'm heavily using Twitter right now for my uh, hazards like natural uh, hazards postings where I'm updating people fairly quickly on things like Fukushima and so it it's the, 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 especially when you want to bring in younger people and yeah. keep them on the ball, um, that, that's, that's actually very serious. It's not the social tool in the way people think about you know, talking about what socks did you put on in the morning. It, it, yeah. It's actually very um, intentional. Absolutely. And, yeah. and Rich and, and uh, yeah. Daniel work uh, primarily on the website now. I mean, if there's people who are interested in that and make, making that appeal, uh, to certain groups of people, that would be great. Yeah, Twitter posting is favorite. really easy to do, and I'm going to give a workshop about it at the thing of Marvel sometime mm -hmm. uh, about how people can set up effective Twitter networks and get them rolling. Um, so if, if, uh, you know, if I can help whoever wants That's to great. do that, do that, I would. Terrific, Michael. You're great. Okay, so let's, uh, let's come together in, uh, in a circle. We'll stand up. Yes. Announcements. And stretch a little bit. Oh. Oh. Uh, Announcements. Yeah. Announcements. Yes, we're going to do okay. that up here. <laughs> oh, look at this. My God. Good captain. I'm coming, I'm coming. So we have three things to do in a, in a fairly short period of time. One is just to do a go around. Uh, if, you can, if you can say the gift from this evening in a, in a, in a word. Uh, or two or three, that would be great. Uh, following that, we'll have announcements, I mean, very brief announcements for anybody who has one. Uh, and then Margaret's going to lead us in our song. Oh. Oh. Before we start, may I um, give a little contribution? I, I just, um, because we're here standing in a circle, um, I would like to call in or have a strong thought, loving thought for. Um, Elizabeth St. John, mm -hmm. who died last week, and actually made the choice uh, to part. And she was a very active member of 
in this community, enough transition faculty. Mm -hmm. uh, she was there at the farmer's market every Sunday. She was there at the first few meetings of transition faculty. And she was there very dear with, um, very dear to a lot of our hearts. So mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe a minute of, mm -hmm. of silence just to think um, and have loving thoughts for, for Isabeth. Okay. And um, acknowledgement. Mm. <coughs> Thank you, Simone. Mm. Suggest we sing our song now. We'll do the go round afterwards. Mm. And maybe three verses. You think that's enough or you want to do more? Oh, is that the best song to sing? Oh, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> maybe just a little light of mine is the one. <laughs> yeah. How does that go? Does anybody know that song? Do you have any other songs? Let's go to the <laughs> I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All around the world, I'm gonna let it shine. coming Monday, um, we will be having our third visioning session uh, looking at aspirations for Transition Putney, uh, moving into, or, well, finishing our second year and going into our third. Um, that will be from 9 till noon at the firehouse, and everyone's more than welcome to come. Mm. And Monday. hopefully we'll have free coffee. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. Monday. That's Monday. also Elizabeth's Monday, the first 17th. Oh, is it? No. Wow. Oh, that's Who are you going to get on a Monday? It's her birthday on Monday. Monday. Yeah. I, from everybody who signed up on the doodle, that was the day. So that's the day. We're not going to discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay, so any other Next, announcements? Other uh, brief announcements? Brief. Next weekend, um, not this weekend, but the weekend of October 21st, 22nd, Bioneers by the Bay, Connecticut, yes. oh, really? yes. in New Bedford. Mm -hmm. Transition, transition but we will be represented there. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you're uh, on the panel by me. <laughs> <laughs> no, Nedjeff, one of our uh, funders, we got a grant from New England Grassroots Environmental mm -hmm. Fund, mm -hmm. has a big panel there on the Sunday. And they invited us to come and talk about the amazing work that we do in Putney. Wow, so, uh, fabulous yeah. conference, lots of great speakers, mm -hmm. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. 
In New Bedford? In New said? Bedford. You're going to yes. New Bedford? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I know they're streaming in uh, Montpelier, Montpelier. Mm -hmm. this, this, right? weekend. Yeah. Okay. this weekend. This weekend, yeah. yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. Other announcements? Okay. <clears throat> there are several other economic summit events, and there's a whole listing of them on a white flyer on the library table. So pick, pick up one on your way out. Terrific. So working on the uh, program evaluation of the farmer's market, I'm, I'm, plan to, I'm planning to collect more additional information at four spots at the co-op here, at the bird shop. Wagon there, Perfect. and then that the Saint Paul grocery store. So you see, you know, my team, you know, sitting and showing the, <laughs> some kind of uh, uh, announcements, and I don't run away. Please <laughs> 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 just grab it, show it, and fill up. Mm -hmm. so, uh, are you doing? Are you doing them now after the meeting? Are you doing? No, no, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, any way that you could support uh, Sambat in his project, and it also supports us and our and our uh, yeah. farmers market. Any other announcements? Okay. So let's go around. Uh, do I have it? No. Mm. Who has it? I have it. Okay. So uh, a phrase, a word or a phrase, what's the gift you're taking with you? What's, what's inside you that you want to express? Family, friends, and community. New community. Mm -hmm. Vibrant community. And encouragement and warmth. Mm, warm welcome. Mm -hmm. Opportunities abound. Mm -hmm. Ever changing, ever growing. Uh, sustainability. Hope and gratitude. Renewal. Mm -hmm. Local resilience. Ideas to action. Acceptance and possibilities. Peaceful ground of the heart. Positive action in the present. Family within community. Gratitude for all. Creativity. Thinking and questioning. <laughs> New connections. So good to spend time with all you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Ideas and resources. <laughs> People coming together. <laughs> Change is constant. <laughs> Ready, everybody hug. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>